So I've been trying to make this video now for about three weeks or so, but here in Vancouver, we've got this little bit of a problem. It's called rain. Rain. Hey guys, what's happening? Matt O'Shea here and today we're talking about the DJI Mavic Air. My initial thoughts, the picture profile setting that I use and the best uses I've found for the drone so far. So let's set the scene. About a month ago I was flown out to Atlantic City and to Las Vegas to film a buddy who was speaking at some entrepreneurial conferences. And in Vegas, I actually had the opportunity to see Gary V for the first time, which was awesome. So on one of the days of the conference, they were doing a raffle draw for the DJI Mavic Air. And I purchased an arm length of tickets for 50 bucks. I'm like, oh, I could use this. I could use this drone. Flew back that night, got a call from Zach at DroneWorks the next morning. And sure enough, I won the DJI Mavic Air. Yes. My initial thoughts using the Mavic Air. I love the fact that it's so small that you can pretty much bring it with you anywhere and you're not going to have a problem being weighted down with it. Like I remember when I got the Phantom 3 Professional when it first came out and I was like, oh, this is awesome. You know what it came in? It came in a backpack about this big, whereas this is the Mavic Air's footprint. Look at how small that is. Unbelievable. Now I will say that the Mavic Air isn't as sharp as the Mavic Pro, but it comes pretty close. The Mavic Air also has some great slow motion capabilities, so if you're at say a waterfall like I was here, you're covered with this drone. It's also a unique perspective too, like not a lot of people use slow motion with their drone. Now the Mavic Air also records at a higher bit rate than the Mavic Pro. So that really helps to eliminate any sort of artifacts that show up, say if you're doing like a fast gimbal tilt. Or let's say you're filming in an area that has a lot of the same texture like grass or water or dirt. That's where you start to see a lot of these artifacts showing up in the Mavic Pro. With the Mavic Air with that higher bit rate, psh, no problem. The internal storage in the Mavic Air is a great addition. I found that I've only used it for photos because it can't actually record 4K. So let's talk about the Mavic Air picture profile settings. I keep the sharpness at zero. I find that gives me the most realistic look, especially in scenes that have a lot of trees. I find that if you reduce the sharpness, all the foliage, all the trees become blocky. It's just a really unpleasant, non-recoverable shot. So don't make that mistake. For contrast, I leave it at minus two. This gives me the most amount of flexibility to work with in post. It's also not giving me too flat of an image where you start to see banding. And I leave the saturation at minus two. Just my personal preference. And last but not least, the color setting. So I leave this at D Cinelike. On to some of the things that you should be aware of before purchasing the Mavic Air. One, the battery life. You'll get anywhere from about 16 minutes to 20 minutes with one of these batteries, based on whatever the flying conditions are like. The range on the Air isn't as good as the Mavic Pro. However, I'd say it still keeps up and does an amazing job considering how small it is. Now, I know everyone's ranting and raving about these quick shot capabilities, which are awesome, but I was really hoping that they would have the feature course lock that they have in the Mavic Pro. This allowed for a flyby type of shot where you would have the drone going in one consistent direction while repositioning the camera, similar to what you'd see in an Inspire. Course lock, now you know. The other thing you're gonna wanna be aware of is purchasing ND filters for the Mavic Air. This is gonna help keep your 180 degree shutter rule, which if you don't know is double that of your frame rate. So if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, then you're gonna wanna double that and shoot at 148 or in this case, 1 50th of a second because it's the closest shutter speed. I think for most people though, especially if you're doing run and gun filmmaking, this drone is gonna be good enough for you. For my filmmaking, I could see myself using this drone more than the Mavic Pro. 
So that's it for me guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Got tons more content coming. Feel free to leave a comment or a question regarding filmmaking and I'll be sure to get back to you. And I'll see you guys in the next one.